This is the first in a series of videos to help you learn how to use Microsoft Excel. We're going to start with very basic methods of using Excel and work our way up to some of the more intermediate and then eventually the advanced functions of Excel that you can put to use in your everyday life at work and at home. Since we're starting with the basics, we're going to start with the very basic and that is creating a workbook. And first of all, you'll want to have Excel installed on your workstation. If you work at a company or subscribe yourself to Microsoft 365, you should already have access to an installer and may even have that installed on your workstation. If you do not have it installed, go and uh, check with your IT people and find out if that is available. A Microsoft 365 account allows for up to five installs of Microsoft Office. So even if you have it installed on one machine that's different than this one, you can come and install it on this machine as well. However, we will continue with the assumption that you have Excel installed. So let's get right to it. Now, just like with any other application on Windows, all you need to do is either click on the Start menu and find the application in question, in this case Excel, or if you don't see it at a glance, or in, or if this is a more uh, familiar method for you to find an application, you can simply type in the search bar on the bottom left and type in the name of the application. And then once you have it up on the screen, you can just click on it once, and Excel opens. As you can see, we're using the 365 version of Excel. You may find a different version on your computer, maybe 2019 or an earlier version. Most of what we talk about during these videos will work with the version that you have on your machine. If you find that it does not, uh, please feel free to reach out to me at GoToIT, and uh, I'd be more than happy to make a new video to address that particular version. Now, as you can see, we have the Excel screen up on our screen, if you will. And in my case, we've got some previous files that I've opened for other things that I've worked on. Um, but you'll notice here that you have the option for a blank workbook. And quick terminology note, workbook is what we call an Excel file, just like we call a Word file a document or a PowerPoint file a presentation. Uh, they are called workbooks, and then you know, we'll, when we get into the actual inside of a workbook, we'll talk about the different parts. But now that we have Excel open, we can just click on blank workbook, and there you go. You now have a blank workbook open and ready for you to work on. You can now type in any field that you wish. For example, I'm going to type in A1 here, a brief hello, and hit enter. And now that is in the first cell of the first sheet of this Excel workbook. So a little more terminology for you. Each individual tab in an Excel workbook file is called a worksheet or sheet for short. And then each individual section in that worksheet is called a cell. Think of it like Battleship. You know, we just uh, hit A1. We did not sink our battleship, but we did get put in a little note there. And we'll get into that detail later on as well. As you're working with Excel, you do want to make sure you save. And as I like to tell um, my students and my clients, save like you, you're a Chicago voter early and often. And there's more than one way you can do this. First of all, you'll notice there is a save button here in the upper left. This is what we call the uh, quick task bar. If you click on save, the first time you go to save a file, it will ask you to name it. So we'll call this file new workbook, since that's what we're learning about today. Below that, you can pick where you want to save the file. You'll notice, since I have OneDrive as part of my Microsoft 365 account, it goes to there by default. But I'd rather save it somewhere on my computer. So I'm going to save this on my desktop. And then once I've got those two set, I'm just going to hit save. And let's see if we can, okay, it's still thinking, so we'll give it a moment here. 
As you can see, we have the blue circle of thinking. All right, and there we go. We have it saved. It is over here on the left. It says new workbook. And in the future, if you just want to open that workbook, you just double click on the file in question, just like with any other file that goes with the Microsoft Office application. You'll also notice that automatic saving is turned on in this case. Um, you do not need to have it turned on. It did turn on automatically for me, but if it does not, or if you want to turn it off after it turns on, you can just click on this slider right here in the very upper left where it says autosave. Now, if you do want to manually save an updated version of this document, let's say we put in a little something in, in cell B1, so we have hello in A1 and world in B1, you can actually hit this save button again. Nothing comes up because you've already named it, you've already picked where to save it, it's just going to save in that location. If you would prefer to use the keyboard, you may have noticed when I held my mouse over the icon that it does give you actually the keyboard shortcut, Control S. If you do hit Control S on your keyboard, the same thing happens. It just automatically saves. There is one more option for saving, and that is if you go into the file menu here on the left, you'll notice there is an option to save a copy. This used to be called Save As in other versions of Excel, but if you hit Save a Copy, you can choose where you want to save it, and you can choose both the name, if you want to change the name. So let's say we want to call this New Workbook 2. And let's say we want to save it in an older version of Excel. You'll notice there is an Excel 97 to 2003 workbook version that I can choose here in this pull-down menu. Once I've selected that, I just hit Save. I'm going to keep it on the desktop just to avoid too much confusion. But once it's done saving, you may get a, you may get a message about autosave. We're not. I'm going to, I don't really care about that, so I'm going to check that box and hit Got It. And you'll notice over on the left we have New Workbook 2. It's a slightly different icon because it is a different version of Excel. Now this version of Excel, the current version, can open it. It's just that it is now more compatible with older versions from 90, 1997 to 2003 versions of Office. I don't really see a need for you to be saving in other formats like that, except for maybe one called Comma Separated Value or CSV, and that will be in a later video. Now, once you've got this file saved, and you're, you've done working on it, and you're up to date, all you need to do to leave the file is just click this red X in the upper corner, and that will close Outlook, or excuse me, Excel completely. You'll also notice there's an option to close the workbook here in the file menu. The difference is if you hit close here, it closes the file, but it doesn't close Excel. Then you can go in and create another, another file or open another file from this window. If you click the red X in here in the upper right, that actually closes the whole application, and that's it. You're done. Now, once we want to open a workbook that we've already worked on, of course, like I said before, just double-click on the file. It'll open Excel, and it'll immediately open that workbook, and you can continue working where you left off. So those are the basics for creating and opening workbooks.